Hey there, David Castle here with Pangea Solutions Incorporated. Today I'd like to take you through a bit of a overview of Solution Manager 7.2, particularly Service Pack 5. We're going to be going through uh, some of the basics like how to log on to actual Solution Manager's new improved Fiori Launchpad. Uh, we're going to be going through role-based security. So some things you need to be aware of in terms of getting your users to open the launch pad and different roles and business uh, roles that you actually have to assign with business partners so that your users can use change management. We're going to be going through a couple concepts with regards to the SLD and the landscape management database. And also we're going to be going through a quick overview of how to navigate the charm interface, uh, the system landscape design interface, and also a little bit about sole documentation and uh, best practices packages and how to install those. All right, so we're here inside of SAP and you wanna start using your solution manager applications. Now, provided that you've actually completed the setup and configuration of Solution Manager and your Fiori Launchpad is configured as such, you will be logging in with your Solman uh, admin user, which could be a little different depending on how you configure your system, but this is a generally a standard user. Okay, I want to just load into SAP here. Let's maximize this window. Um, so there's a few different tasks down here you can do. Um, but mostly I just stick to the transaction and you want to open SM underscore work center. And of course you want to spell it correctly. <laughs> Here's the Fiori launch pad. And as you can see, there's a bunch of tiles here. Um, some of them are system we haven't actually configured yet. So you can see the cannot load tiles, but it generally falls into a few groups. So there's actually a configuration group for uh, all the uh, tiles. Um, this one, I believe is for the Fiori Launchpad. So root cause analysis, ITSM. Um, there's actually Solman administration. So like landscape management will go into. Um, there's also user administration, uh, rapid content delivery. This one is for actually to download business uh, warehouse objects. And yes, so you want to go scroll up here and we want to go to we should probably start with change request management so you want to scroll up let's go find change request management here click on the tile and something to note while it's loading here is that SAP is actually checking your users business partner and if you go up to the uh, link at the top here you'll see Soulman Pro and I've actually assigned that for every user in our system right now. You want to be doing that with the transaction BPGen. That's so slash N B P G E N. And that will actually generate business partners for all your users in uh, in your solution manager system. And of course these users have to mirror the names of the ones in your actual managed system so that they can have the same correct permissions for completing your change requests and whatnot. So this is the actual change request management module. And there's a few different things here. You have the favorites, uh, open task, but mostly you'll be using the create menu on the left hand side. And depending on your user, you will see fewer or, well, no, you won't see any more of these, but you'll, you might, you'll see fewer. So we're going to start with actually the first step of change management, and that is a change cycle. So this is the overarching project, essentially, that you want to put your changes in. So we use phase cycles, but there's also continual cycles and alternative continual cycles. But we're going to start with phase cycle, and that just represents the normal sort of waterfall development process. So here we are, and you can see there's a status overview and we're on created right now. So what we can start doing here is since this isn't saved, you can type in a description. So sample description, don't mind my keyboard, it's quite loud. 
And we have a landscape and a branch, actually. So if you want to check out our solution here and the branch, we want to use development, I believe. So SLAN is an administrative environment for actually showing Solution Manager how your systems talk to one another with respect to transports. Of course, you still have to set this up in STMS transaction in your managed system with, of course, domain links to Solution Manager. Uh, we're not going to go into that too much, but I can show you transaction SLAN and it actually navigates you to another Fiori Launchpad tile. And this is not going to work first time. There's always something with the certificate. Here we go. Okay, so this is our DE1 solution, our development environment. And it's actually just a visual representation of the things I've put in here. So since we're using a single, um, single physical server with multiple clients, we don't have the actual ability to use workbench requests. And a big use case for Solution Manager is, of course, workbench requests, which can have um, cross-client um, objects which would be something like, I don't know, uh, function modules and things of that nature, custom custom development. And right now we're only able to use this landscape for customizing requests, which will be anything in like SPRO or role config or things of that nature. So if you want to set this up, you have to actually create branches. Some of them are created for you, like um, development and maintenance. Uh, but you do have to create logical component groups and for example, in this case, ABAP, we have ABAP, but no databases. I'm doing air quotes here, of course you can't see, but the database can, if you're using the ABAP systems and um, using it in this type of config, you don't actually need to put a database logical component group because it's actually handled as part of the ABAP server. So you like create this, make it as ABAP, technical system type, of course, application server ABAP. It's just to give them a heads up what you're using. Um, and then you can assign technical systems. So an ABAP, um, if you want to go development branch, we should see all our systems. So you assign them here. It's, a de it's the global uh, development right now because we don't have any other server instances that we don't want DE1, for example, to talk to DE2, which is our HANA system in this case. Um, so you have your dev system, which is client 100 of DE1, uh, your QA, which is 200, production is 300, and then the reference is 000. We don't have an evaluation, demo, or training system, just from how we're set up. Um, so yeah, that, that makes the uh, change control landscape. Funny this is here is you can't actually delete a change control landscape if you've assigned any phase cycle to it. And actually once you've created a phase cycle, specifically a normal like an actual phase cycle not a continual cycle you and and then it's attached to this uh, change control landscape you can actually delete the change control landscape so I've just deprecated this one and this is our actual change control landscape um, here is this is a soul doc thing um, if you go to all it'll be everything but you can you can select which solution documentation is allowed in this landscape uh, so it's sort of like a quick selector for just anything you want to have as part of your solution here. Imports. Um, so this is actually, this is a good one. So this is best practices explorer. It's sort of a newer feature of SAP, but to explain it quickly, um, SAP set up a sort of repository for new systems. So say you install HANA um, 1710, and you want to actually start your HANA experience with all your SPRO customizing done and a few different custom objects for finance, say. Sure, it'll come with finance if you pay for that option, but the best practice module lets you configure it as if you're using the best sort of version of finance, so you'll notice that you're you're, you select like a country for your best practice explorer package. Say you choose Canada, where we're located, it, and it'd be, it'll select Canadian currency type. It'll do all that SPRO customizing for you. Um, something to note though, is that not all best practices 
actually include physical SPRO uh, objects. Some of them are actually just solution documentation it, and it shows how to actually physically set that up in terms of process flows. It's sort of useful, but it's much nicer when you can implement the actual package that includes SPRO and then you can actually get your system started from scratch on a new installation off on the right foot. So you don't have to worry about like, you know, currency conflicts and things of that nature. So we're back inside Charm and we're selecting our branch, which was, if I remember correctly, was development. Yes, development, because there's nothing in the other systems. And you like to choose a um, change manager this is the person who can actually release approval for change documents in the RFCs, a request for change in this phase cycle. Um, so generally with template users, we're just gonna use uh, this guy here, the CM, CHCM, GZ1. Change advisory board, quality advisory board. Um, those are actually, this is for quality gate management, which is sort of the simplified version of Charm, which we're not using. So we wanna go and save this. Um, sample description. You know what? Let's just video phase cycle one. Okay. Save. So we'll take a second and we're going to save. And here we go. We have a phase cycle. When it's in created, you can't really do much. Um, it's just sort of around. So you want to set the phase to scope. Alternatively, if you created Yes, okay, so we want to use transport management integration, otherwise there's really no point. Um, click yes. So we're creating the phase cycle now. We're going to check the prereqs for the actual task list. Uh, define the scope. Everything here you can keep default. You'll show that we're moving transports here to here to here based on our STMS config. Clusters we're not using, so we'll just skip that and then create. Perfect. So you give you the little save item here, scope, and we're in the scope status. So now we're pretty much done for phase cycle for the moment. So what you can do now is you can create like a request for change, which will sort of hold change documents you want to use. Um, the reason you see two different ones here, the YMCR is actually a copy transaction type. So in case we upgrade our system past SPS5, and there's changes that maybe break the RFC actual transaction. We'll always have the backup of how it is right now in terms of the code as the YMCR. But for now, we can use the SMCR as it's most up to date, and it will remain that way for the future. Here we go. So this is a request for change. It's quite daunting, but we'll get through it. So you can see there's, oh, I just closed that, status overview. <laughs> there's a bunch of statuses here and depending on which change documents you attach to this, it'll have different effects with regard to the RFC. So generally the flow is you create it, you type in all the, all the things here. Validation, and when you're in validation, you need the specific permissions for validations, um, sorry, to be approved. So. You can create it, validate it, and then you add scope items here, which are actually change documents in between here. You set it to be approved, and then a change manager approves the actual um, scope items. So either normal change, standard change, urgent change, general change, any of those. And um, they press approve, and then it actually moves into um, approved. And then once you've actually created and started adding things to your normal change or your standard change, this will switch to being implemented. And it sort of stays here until you want to close off the RFC and not allow any more change documents to be connected to it. And if you do actually decide that you want to save your system, uh, you want to save sort of uh, the logistics and not create another RFC with the change, you know, the change procedures and all these other things, you can actually set it to extend scope, in which case it works as if 
um, your back end validation, and then you can create scope items with new, you know, new standard or normal general changes and things of that nature. We're gonna start typing in some data about our RFC. Sample video RFC will be the description. Um, our sold to party. Right now, we only have our subsidiary uh, company called Integration Solution Services, so we'll click that. Um, our change manager, again, you probably want it to be your actual change manager template user, or if you've copied this user to another role, uh, to another user with the same roles, you can choose them. We can leave this blank. Priority, uh, whatever you like really, depending on your organization. And your change cycle, you actually want to select the one that we just created. So video phase cycle at this point. Here we are. And risk, maybe we don't need to select risk. So with Solution Manager SPS 5, you have this guy here, standard change. And what standard change allows you to do is create standard change documents only. So if you click this, you won't be able to create normal or urgent or general or admin changes for this RFC, but instead you'll be able to create standard changes. And standard changes very simply are just another workflow provided by SAP that it, while removing a couple of the change managers authorization checks, you can actually use your IT operator to batch import changes from Q from uh, dev to Q and then Q to prod or however your system landscape is designed. But they use the task list to actually batch import all of those instead of, for example, normal change where you can move one transport request at a time or at least all the transport requests in that normal change instead of everything attached to the RFC. So yeah, it's, it's a little different. Um, we're not using it currently but I could see that there's definitely a use case for it. So we're not gonna click that right now. Uh, we're gonna actually proceed with a normal change. It's a little, a little more simple. So you wanna scroll down here, and actually first we wanna save this. So save this. And you can see Solution Manager Sample 2 is quite a bit faster. So we wanna set this to validation right away. Okay. So now we'll have the ability to actually insert scope items. And scope items are where you put in your change documents. Change documents have transport requests and transport requests contain code or customizing, or in this case, it will be always be customizing. So here we actually have, again, as I mentioned before with our uh, RFC, we copy the core transaction types over so that in case the system fails or SAP breaks something with a new update, we can actually use the old defined uh, transaction. So those are those are actually at the bottom, I believe. So the top ones are the SAP standards. Um, it's fine to use either, it'll work the same. So we're gonna do normal change. So I'll take a second to find our configuration item. So this is actually just, it's auto-populated, you don't need to worry about it. Um, so video, normal change one, Okay, and we want to save that. So now, luckily I'm still using a, um, a power user, I believe, Soulman Admin, so I can do anything. You can tell from the Fury Launchpad. Uh, generally, you'll log into a, um, you, at this point you'll, you'll be in, in a different role. But, so you'll release this for approval, and then save. And now you'll see that the approval block has something in it. So approval block, here we go, approval step one. And actually you can gain more approval steps depending on you how you um, configured the system. So this is just the basic out of the box essentially config for Soulman. And we can get like, up, I think up to five approval steps. Don't quote me on that, but there's quite a few. And uh, so yes, uh, as the change manager, you'll be approving the changes. So if you're in the CM role or you have the CM role, you can click approved. And then you save that. Yes, you save that. 
and we're going to get into approved. Yes. Okay, so the developer will actually click this, I believe. You'll actually release for development. So just one more and save. So we're being implemented now. And now you have a transaction ID for this normal change. So you can actually navigate to the normal change now and work with it within the context of this RFC. Okay, so we're gonna navigate to the normal change here. So we click the transaction ID. Here we are. So you notice there's a common theme around here. It's uh, you have the status overview, the general details, whatnot. But here's a new one. We have transport management. So this will actually create transport requests for the user that's editing this. Or depending, you can actually assign it, but the de defaults to whoever's editing. And yeah, so we're going to start with this normal change. So we're going to hit edit here. So it already prefills the description from what we wrote. All this is implemented here. And it tells us our scope item. Mr. Soulman Admin. Okay, so if you go down here, you can't really do much. So the developer will actually set this to in development. So that's your first step. And now we can do the fun stuff. So if you go down here to transport management, you can create a transport request in your target system. So for example, DE1 app app 100 is the only choice because it's our only dev system. So we don't use work batch requests. It's just not set up that way right now because it's only a singular SAP system. So just customizing. And we can actually add tasks for different users under this transport. Right now we're gonna keep it simple. Just do the singular task for Soulman admin. And then since he has all the um, SAP permissions to do stuff with objects, we can actually just, we don't have to worry. And yes, here he is. So create. So now, right. So the project track is locked. Um, so you actually have to, uh, <laughs> I forgot about this because we did it on an old phase cycle. So if you open the task list here, you see troubleshooting 101. Um, you can see, so there's some lock icons here. The source systems are locked. The track is locked. So we can actually unlock these systems individually. Right, okay, so here it is. <laughs> so if you go under general tasks, you can lock and or un you release the transport tracks. So if you unlock that, this is sort of a function to stop people from working with transports before the phase cycle is actually ready. Um, okay, so this is the phase cycle and normal change here. So we should be able to create the transfer request now. Just customizing, create. Right, so <laughs> another issue here. So <laughs> the way that Soulman maps the roles and the users is it actually just looks at the exact name from DZ1, which is your solution manager system, and checks DE1 if that user exists. So since that user doesn't exist, it's gonna have an issue assigning tasks. So we can check now if I refresh this, likely there won't be a transport there because it errored out. I'm gonna re restart it, yeah. So there's no transport there. So instead of creating a uh, Instead of creating a new user, I'm just going to change the processor for the transport request and the request owner, just so it all syncs up. We'll use um, me. We'll use dcastle super user, and make sure that my task is for me. Okay, so create now, and it should work just fine. Yeah, these are things to be aware of. Here we go. Perfect. So it establishes the RFC. Uh, with a trusted RFC between Solution Manager and the target client. And now we have two cre requests created. One of these is the transport, the other one's a task. So save that so we can get rid of these notifications in a second. Okay. So here we are. Uh, oh, I forgot to click off the customizing request. Okay, anyways. So we want to log in now. Now is the actual time to do 
work in the system. So our work, quote unquote, is gonna be just essentially logging into our D1 application server and into client 100 and creating a fake country in SPRO, assigning it to a transport request, and then pushing that through the tracks of the system. All right, so we're gonna log into our DE100 development server. And we're gonna check um, our transports first with SE10. So here we go, customizing only. And here we go. So we'll find, do, 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 these are quite expanded. Okay, so the video phase cycle, release. Okay, so this is our customizing task. So remember 900458, because we're gonna use that when we save our fake country. And here we go. So this is what Solution Manager created, and we're gonna work with it in the development sense. So you wanna to go to uh, SPRO. Usually your developers won't have access to SPRO, but in the case of making an example, we're gonna use this. So you wanna go down to SAP NetWeaver, general settings, set countries, define countries in my SAP systems. You click the execute there. So if you scroll down, I believe I've already created a fake country and I have deleted it actually, good, okay. So we'll do new entries, um, country, FC1, sure. Name, fake country one, long name, fake country one video. And the only thing that's required here is you gotta put in the date format, uh, whatever you like. Save. And here we go, our request. So we're gonna go find that request that's attached to video phase cycle. And since it's modifiable, it'll show up. So the customizing task and connect it. Okay, so that's saved. So now assuming that in your regular development cycle, you have the only, that's the only thing you need to change and you wanna start transporting changes. You'll go to here, customizing tasks and you'll actually go click this guy here and say release directly. Oh, I'm sorry, this is actually the wrong one. Um, there's, an, there's one from 200 to 300 that I made earlier. It's this guy here, so remember 458, because I clearly forgot, and I released that one directly. So now that's been released, and you'll actually just go into um, your normal change, and I believe you can see if it's released if you refresh, uh, or at least, oh, it doesn't even give you a notification, that's interesting. Okay, well, regardless, it's now released, so you can actually set this to be passed to test. So when you do this as a developer, this is initializing the transport track, and it's gonna do a whole bunch of different things in the background, and send that change over to 200. Right, so something to note is that scope um, can't when it says the current phase, you can't do things. You want to go back to your actual phase cycle. And, and this is the case where you got to actually... Oh, this is not ours. You want to go to um, the recent items. Video phase cycle. And we want to actually move this to build, <laughs> of course. It's a rookie mistake, but uh, you guys will get used to it too. It's Luckily, the error reporting in 7.2 is quite good. So it at least gives you an idea of what to do when something goes wrong. So you want to go back to your normal change now. Sometimes it glitches and you can't actually go back. So in this case, you just go to our search menu, which is quite helpful. Change request management and normal changes and search. And it should be at the very bottom. Video normal change, click the transaction ID and it'll still give us the errors. But now if you hit edit, and pass it, it should work just fine. So this can take a few seconds, depending on your system. Ours is actually not on any sort of fast database, so it's just our standard Sybase. 
There we go. So the transaction is saved. If I go log into our 200 system, just for proof of concept here, I should see that the transports have been moved. Or the one transport. Alright, I see 10. And here we are. We should actually have in our SPRO, we should have that listed in our countries now. So if you go to NetWeaver, General Settings, Set Countries, Define Countries, Fake Country 1, I believe, was our name. And here it is. So it's now in our customizing for this client. We should have none of that in client 300 because it hasn't moved yet. So I'm just gonna show you guys proof here. So it's not here. So after the tester has done their testing and you can see everything's good to go, we want to actually release this and say it's successfully tested. Alternatively, you can put it back to development and it'll actually remove, I believe, remove the transports and revert them back to the development environment only. I haven't done this yet, but that's the theory. So confirm successful test, save. All right. Look down here, it's all the same. And now we would be logging in as actually the change manager again. And we'd like to approve preliminary import. And that we'll save that and that should shuttle it over to the, um, oh, sorry, this, this will, uh, right. So this will actually make sure that it's live in the queue system entirely. And then you want to actually confirm successful tests for the queue environment. Again. And now the change manager can authorize this for import into production. Save that again. So it's authorized. And now import that normal change into production. And it'll do a whole bunch of stuff in the background. And we can get our transports and our fake country into DE1300. Tra transports are triggered. Everything looks good. And now if we go to, we're in 200 still, let's go to our 300 clients. We should be seeing in Espro that our country is now there. And uh, live with our changes. edited it for some reason though oh right sorry <laughs> that's i would have to actually click it for that to work here we are okay good to go so i hope you guys enjoyed our overview of charm today that's all i'll be going through for now of course there's um, a few different types of scope items you can add to your rfc and if you did want to actually add more scope items to test things out you can go to uh, your RFC here, video RFC, and then just go to um, edit. If you do confirm change, it's everything's locked and you can't do anything, but you can go extend scope. And I believe you need change manager permissions to do this. And here you go. It goes back to pretty much the original status here and you can add in any scope items you like. including standard change, but it doesn't work unless you've clicked this guy, which you're now unable to do. You need to have to make a new RFC.